We've had a lot of experience on Saints Row. This is our third round uh, in the Saints Row universe. The opportunity to create a new city, we were just yeah. too excited. We kind of we saw it as an opportunity to sort of reinvent ourselves. You know, like we, I think like Frank and I were maybe the art direction team on the last game, and when the reviews came out, you know, it didn't didn't wow everybody like we wanted it to, right? So we wanted this to be an opportunity to kind of show people what we can do. So we spent time really trying to, to nail down our, our technology and, you know, revamp streaming engine and everything to enable the artist to just sort of push textural detail, you know, like ge geometric sculpting in the world, like way beyond what we had done before. One of the, the biggest things I think that uh, we took away from the previous city design was, was really just sort of designing a flow that's easy to navigate, you know, so like, you know, I personally don't like having to stare at a mini map all the time when I'm driving. So we provided landmarks in the actual world that you can drive toward and find your way around. I mean, you're obviously going to have to hit the map to see where to go next and whatnot. But like, I really wanted to design a city to just lead you, you know, lead you around without the mini map, without GPS. Another big thing is like with, you know, we've we've got a pretty solid editor this time around, whereas the previous games were built like Raiden right Max, and with the editor, you know, we can make pretty big sweeping changes very fast you know so if design says you know it'd be great if a road cut right through here we can do that you know like it'd be cool if we could just slide this skyscraper over we could do that without having to spend you know hours maybe days re-engineering a piece of terrain you know to, to suit that so it's 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 enabled us you know both on art and design to iterate further than we were able to in the past so you know as the city gets built from the ground up, it's getting prettier and it's getting more fun because we're fine-tuning both sides of it this time around. We approach city design on a much more macro scale. We're not just designing, you know, like putting the buildings in and designing the flow of like the streets below it. Like we were designing everything on a macro scale. Like how does this entire city look from multiple angles? And we've moved like the downtown area over here and over here to see how it reads. Steelport is a uh, it's like a big manufacturing industrial type of city, or that that's its history. That's what it started with. Like zoning didn't really occur in this town. And so what you have is you have like um, skyscrapers and a steel mill, and you have chemical plants like just dropped in the middle of everything. And so we have like a lot of different neighborhoods in the city, but it's all based around manufacturing. Some of the influences when we were looking at building Steelport, we went to um, Chicago and we looked at, uh, they have very famous, you know, very famous canals and these big uh, steel uh, bridges and structures. So everything kind of builds up toward the center. But to get into the center, you have to go over these big canal bridges. Out here in the outlying areas is one of our old homes, one of the mansions that was in the, the town. Uh, but now it's a brothel. Things have changed over time quite a bit. What's really going on in the city is the syndicate, all the gangs are kind of taken over. So we've got, you know, strip clubs, casinos, brothels, like, you know, all of the, you know, things you'd expect to see in like this over the top sort of city of sin kind of taken over the old city and things they don't care about just kind of went to pot. So like the, the regular everyday Joe is just living in this, this, you know, the city that's seen, that's seen neglect, you know, so like mass transit's gone, you know, it doesn't work anymore, you know, and uh, a lot of the factories that are still open are very run down. So it kind of creates this, this sort of, the sort of contrast where you've got like the rundown, you know, the remnants of what the city used to be, and then the flashy, glitzy kind of nightlife that's just been kind of added on top of it. You know, like like these guys just came in and took over, and they kind of did it on the cheap. We've got this kind of like tacked-on feel. It's kind of got like a like an Atlantic City maybe kind of a vibe, or like an old Vegas type of a look. Like when the syndicate came in and they took over and like the industry started to decline and things like that. What you end up seeing in the world are like a whole bunch of businesses that just kind of they didn't evolve. Or you still see a lot of this old uh, Americana type of feel. So, you know, we have diners, we have an old mom and pop grocery store, and things like that still in the world. And people are still trying to make their way in the world, like the peons, <laughs> the average Joe in the world is still trying to make their way, while this, you know, this, this powerful corporate syndicate, um, you know, looms over everything. Yeah, we wanted the, the city design to sort of kind of echo the gameplay itself, you know, where it's just very dense. There's stuff to do around every corner. What we didn't want to do is we didn't want to go like, hey, this is Chicago, and then recreate Chicago. What we wanted to do is create like a cool fictional city. When you think of like, what are like the greatest fictional cities? Gotham City, Metropolis. We wanted to have that kind of like feeling for our city. Uh, this is anime we were big, real big fans of, uh, Tekken Kincreet. 
And uh, what we wanted to do is create a city that has that kind of like luster and that kind of feel immediately just by looking at it. It looks like um, that city has a lot of history, uh, and we've spent quite a bit of time like designing like brands and ideas of how the history would evolve through time in the in this city, as well as we wanted to capture that kind of over the top. Um, really expressive comic book style. You know, like uh, the way a comic book artist would approach making a drawing of a panel in a comic book. You know, they're not necessarily constrained by realistic proportions. Like, for instance, you know, they put a character on a building and they want that background building to be, like, just fill the frame. And that's, that's what we're doing visually with our game. And that's why our skyscrapers are so tall and it really gives a sense of power. Like, who owns the city, you'll always tell. Doing a new city kind of it was just like, this is our chance, you know, this is our chance to really kind of nail it.